Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Happy Even After podcast. I'm so excited for today's guest, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. I am here today with Kim Ford, and she has over a decade of experience in the industry of news and celebrity and speaking and all of that stuff. So let me just give you a little bit more details about it because this woman is on fire. She is an on air host. She's a TEDx speaker. She's the author of It's Never Too Late, The Ultimate Guide to Make an Epic Comeback After a Setback. She's appeared on CNN News. She's been an entertainment contributor where she shares her take on what's relevant in film, TV, celebrity news, and so forth. And she's a freelance writer for The Hollywood Reporter. She became the executive producer of her own TV show called In the Spotlight with Kim Ford, which is all about candid one-on-one interviews with celebrities. And that show reached 2 million households in Atlanta, which is nuts. And she also interviewed Oprah, like holy crap that's amazing but that's not why Kim's here her purpose reaches so much deeper than red carpet events and film premieres and interviewing celebrities and her strongest gift is helping women overcome life's obstacles and that's why she's here with us today so welcome girl ah ah, that was such an amazing intro I want you with me everywhere I go that was great thank you (laughs) It was so fun to it was so fun to write because as I was going through like all of your stuff and I was like, whoa, she did that too and that and that like it was so cool like you have done so much. Oh, thank you, thank you, and it's been a windy road, but hey, it's exactly what I asked for. Glad to be here. <laughs> so let's dive in because you are divorced and it seems like from the point of your divorce was when your glow up like happened. Can you just share a little bit of the background and a little bit of your divorce story? Yeah, for sure. So I divorced um, where we separated in 07 and it was final in 09. And that's how I always remember how I even, the year I got into media was, it was the same year that we separated. That's when life was like, oh my God, I'm really out here in these streets, a single mom. So I said, you know what? I need to figure out what the rest of my life is going to look like. And even when I was married, um, I was able to, you know, do a little research about, you know, media and what it, what, you know, back in 2007, that's when um, the internet and social media hadn't, hadn't even really started popping yet as far as entertainment goes. And I would just do a Google search and print things here and there about how to start an online magazine. But as far as taking action, really couldn't do too much because way too much was going on behind the scenes. So by the time I was actually, you know, separated, living in my own space, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to go ahead and start that online magazine that I always wanted to do. You know, I can either wake up crying every day, you know, thinking about what happened and what he did and who he did it with and, you know, all the things that replay in our minds. I can keep doing that or I can move on to something I've always really wanted to do and heal at the same time. Right. So that's what I started I chose to do you know it was a very hurtful divorce and when I tell you it was it was it was hard for me (laughs) you know you know sometimes people divorce and they're like okay you know it's amicable and all of that it was furthest from that it was multi-layered so this wasn't an easy you know trek up the road for me I'll put it that way and because I was so determined to make the rest of my life better than what I had just experienced I was so focused and determined to start my career in media. Now, my degree is in psychology, something totally different. I didn't study that in college or anything. When I tell you I was greener than a golf course, I was green, green, (laughs) green on media. And, you know, how do you get to these events and how do you get on the list and how do you interview these celebrities? I, I really had to figure it out. And thank God I finally did So I have so many questions from what you just said, but one of them is, was there ever, like how long of a time from you being in that dark place where you were kind of the the worst version, you know, the the saddest version of yourself that everyone who goes through a divorce, I think, goes through at some point, to the point where you made that decision to say, not, you know, not me, not anymore, I'm going to do something different with this. Yeah, it was, it wasn't immediate. It was a start stop start stop so 
it was like I would say, okay, this is what I'm going to focus on today, the media stuff and Googling stuff. And it could be a day where I just went to work because I still worked full time in my regular nine to five. And I was just so zoned out. I couldn't even focus on anything. So it was, it wasn't an easy, just start and go, mm -hmm. you know, I would start and stop. So I would say, um, but it was still that same year. Um, in 2007, we separated in October 2007, and that's when my media career, as, as far as I claim it, even though I was still researching and still figuring it out, I still say that's when I started, October 2007. And even while I was still moving and researching and doing, I was still healing. You know, it wasn't a clean break of, okay, I'm over it now, I'm totally healed, and now I'm going to work on this. No, it was all mixed up in there together because if I would have waited until I was totally unbothered by another thought, mm. there's no way I would have started way back then. I would have been, it probably would have been years later, and that's how my healing happened in phases, right? It went from where, you know, I was crying every day to where I would go to work and people were talking to me. I could hear words, but I couldn't process yeah what they were saying and they're like Kim are you okay and I'm like yeah yes I'm okay you know it went through that phase to you know it's like grief you know the yeah, death sure. of what I thought was going to be forever the death of the betrayal with someone I knew it was just so many layers in it and so as the years went you know I did a lot of prayer I did a lot of reading my bible I went to counseling I had to, I had, and I talk about this in my book, I had to reset my mind, my words, my spirit. It took me doing the work for things to start clicking for my healing to really take place. Otherwise, if I didn't do those necessary things, I still would be in the same phase of, you know, not forgiving him and all the parties that was involved. And, you know, it, it was really some real work that took place over several years. I'll put it that way. And that's such an and important that's message. Important. This, this is not this is a not linear process. It, it, it does, does take does time. time. How much did fear factor in to making that leap to doing something completely novel? Oh my gosh. There was, there was definitely fear because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. First of all, you know, it's one thing to say, okay, I know this, I studied it, I've done the work. No, I don't know what the heck I was doing. What I did know was that I did have a strong sense of confidence of who I was, regardless of what I just went through, because my foundation was strong. I had a very strong foundation and confident uh, foundation of who I was and where I belonged. So just because I went through that phase, that didn't mean I no longer deserved the life that I wanted career-wise, you know, career and personal, but definitely career-wise. So even though I knew that in the back of my mind, that's what kept me going. Like, this is where I am. This is not where I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep moving forward. So yes, I felt the fear, but I refused to live in the fear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So even though I felt that fear, I'm like, okay, I see you. Yes, I know. All these bills need to be paid. Yes, I know my kids need this and this. I think my kids were like three and 13 at the time. So I have like a 10 year gap. So sometimes if I had to go out and cover a red carpet, my daughter was old enough to stay with the younger one if I was going, going out and coming back real, really quick, quickly or something. But as I moved in that, the fear became less and less. I became more confident. I started knowing actually kind of what was going on, how this, how this worked. And because I was independent, the way I did it didn't look the same way as someone at, you know, a major magazine would do it because they come in from a totally different structure and protocol. I'm doing this as a one woman show, right? And they may have been doing it with the whole team and a staff. So the way I had to stop look, cause I did start doing that. I have to say, okay, I need to do it just like them, but no, my structure isn't like them. I have to do what works for me as an independent, as a one woman show. And eventually I was able to get more help, but starting off, that was one of the fears is, you know, can I pull this off? And the more the industry went digital, it became a lot more easier because when I started, everything was print. Everything was really expensive, like really expensive. If you wanted to print 50,000 copies of a magazine, it cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm like, I don't have that kind of money trying to figure out what I'm trying to do, <laughs> what I'm trying to do. 
But as the time went on, things started switching into digital, which made it easier for me. People started finding out who I was, and then I would get a call and say, hey, we have Carmelo Anthony in town. Um, would you like to interview him? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I get another email and say, hey, we have um, Sanai Lathan in town. Would you like to interview her? And I'm like, yes. And how did you, I didn't say, how did you find me? But in the back of my head, I'm like, how the heck they find me? But maybe SEO, I have no idea. I say God, I don't know, but I took it. So as I started getting those calls and those emails, I started to take it even more seriously. I started seeing even more so what I had been through could not be in the way of me executing what I'm getting calls and emails about. And I wouldn't let it. And you know, I, I made a choice to make it small, even though it was so huge in my life, I had to look at it and say, you know what, you look really big in my life right now, this hurt, this pain, this betrayal, but I am going to make you small, right? That's, that's, that's the only way I could really get through what I made it small by confessing what I wanted, by, by believing who I saw myself to be in my head. And the more I did the work, the smaller and smaller and smaller the fear became. Oh, I love that. So let's talk about your TEDx talk because it's so good. And anyone who's listening can go watch it on your website, which is IamKim4.com, and you have it right there. Um, it's, it's fabulous. But the whole point of it is that it's never too late. And mm -hmm. I love that because so often we think, well, I'm too old to find love again. I'm too old to have the career that I want. So how did you come to that realization that it's never too late to get the things that you want? Because, you know, as, as I would, you know, be on the red carpet and, and talk to people and have conversations, even with people on social media, they would say, oh, that's cool. You get to interview those people, but uh, I can't do that now. It's too late. And so I would always hear a lot of regret in their voice. And I'm saying, hold up. This isn't where I started. Even though you're seeing me interviewing Oprah, Tyler Perry, doing all these wonderful things, Kevin Costner, all these amazing people, that absolutely wasn't my start. I had to go go and, and, and do the work. You didn't see me when <laughs> I would cry because I was hurting so bad and had to wipe my face and get back out there on the red carpet and just because I'm on when it's showtime it's showtime you didn't see that point so I'm like no it's never too late I don't care that I didn't have a degree in this because what I chose to do was something that was figure out figure outable I may be saying that wrong thanks to Marie Forleo but <laughs> <laughs> but you know I was able to figure it out and ask people and get you know figure those things out it wasn't like I was just trying to go and become a physician or something where you can't freestyle with that. But it's like, hey, it's journalism, it's media, and I wanted to create positive content. I wanted to, you know, it was so much of what I was seeing in media that was so negative regarding relationships and love, and, and this is how you get over a guy. And I'm like, that's not what you're gonna do unless you want to be, you know, miserable for the next five years. You're just gonna create even a bigger spiral down, you know, downward. So I said, you know what, I'm going to create some positive content. I'm going to put it on my site. I didn't know how in the world to create a website back then. That's when you had to, if you didn't know a web designer that knew HTML, you had to pay them thousands and thousands of dollars. And like I said, I didn't have thousands of, do thousands of dollars to just figure something out. So back then, Yahoo uh, had a template, a user-friendly template. And so I got some content up. It looked like I was an official online magazine and the first major event that I requested credentials to cover, meaning you have to have, have access to, request access to go to the event to do the red carpet. The first one was the BET Hip Hop Awards in 2007. I didn't think they was gonna tell me no. I said, you know what, we about to, we're about to find out. I don't care that I just launched maybe two weeks ago, but so what? So I, I submitted my paperwork and lo and behold, I finally got an email that said, congratulations you've been you know admitted and so i like to tell that story just to show you people what if i would have said you know what i went through a divorce i have too much to focus on i have my kids i have to only focus on kid on my kids and that's it forget any of the desire and mission and purpose that god gave me no it's never too late so the more i would tell that story i would have to keep reminding people say what wait no it's not too late it's not too late for that i don't care what you've been through it's never too late I just started, you know, grad school 
last summer. I finished undergrad long time ago. I'm not going to say how many years, but <laughs> trust me, it was long, 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 long time ago. Well, not that long, but long enough, you know, for people to be like, eh, it's too late. But no. And I talk about that in the TED Talk. Like, if I always wanted to go back to grad school to, to do something that complements, you know, what I'm doing and that yearning every, you know, New Year's Eve resolutions and things you want to do, that yearning of, you know what, I always said I wanted to go back to grad, go to grad school. That was always on my list and I could never check it off and that was really bugging me. So I said either each New Year's Eve, I'm going to always think about this or I'm going to do something about it. So I finally did because why? Because it's never too late. I don't care if you're in your 30s or in your 40s or in your 50s. It's never too late. If you always wanted to go back to do something, you know, what are you going to do in school at, at X amount of age or too young? Yeah. You know, if you think you are confident in, you know, what it is you know, um, you've done your research and you're really, really passionate about it, I don't care if people say, well, you're too young, you may not know. Actually, you might be exactly what they need. Mm -hmm. You can only find out. And that's what I did when I requested credentials after only having a website for two, for two weeks. I said, you know what, I'm gonna take this shot. We're gonna find out. And they said yes. And from event to event to event, I just made relationships with publicists, um, sometimes with the celebrity themselves because you just in, you interview them over and over and over again. They're like, oh, hey, Kim. But they know, you know, I, I do the work. I'm not just there just to look cute on the red carpet. That's far beyond my goal. Um, if that is your goal, you're not going to make it. You're not going to last long because it is a lot of work. Even though it's entertainment <laughs> industry, it's still a lot of work when the cameras go off. So that's why I did the, the, the TED Talk. That's why I chose that topic because I need people to know it's never too late. I don't care if you've been through a divorce. I don't care what your ex told you about yourself. That is not true because I had to unlearn those words that I heard about myself that I refuse to hold on to. You know, because once you hear something over and over again, it's like, wait a minute, am I that person? It's like, no, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to take that on. That's that person's perception of who they think I am. And that's their business and their era. But I'm not going to receive that. So I chose not to receive it. And I had to keep telling myself who I am. I am successful. I am prosperous. What I do works. People care what I have to say. People heal by what I have to say. Those were constantly my confessions. And so that's why I chose that topic for my TED Talk. Do you think do you had think you not gotten divorced that your path would have been the same? Do you think like from that pain you actually grew as a person? Oh my God, yes. And I'm here to tell you, I didn't realize that until right before I walked on stage to do my TED Talk, right? Because the whole time it was happening, I always said, now, wait a minute, how in the world did this happen to me? Like, I'm smarter than this. How did this happen? But you know what? It has nothing to do with smarts. It has absolutely nothing to do. It's, it has everything to do with your destiny and your road, what you're going to learn on your road, what you're going to grow through on your road, what you may have to take, keep taking the same test until you finally get it on your road because it's going to lead you into where you're supposed to be. And 10 times out of 10, where you're supposed to be, it's gonna help someone else. It's not just gonna be self-serving. Yeah. You're gonna obviously gain from it and learn and grow from it, but even the bigger picture, so many more people will. So it was right before I walked on that stage because that was my first time really fully telling my story. Because before then, most people knew me by talking to other people about their stories. Hey, tell me about your movie. Tell me about your book. Tell me about your music. I'm talking to other people about themselves. This was the first time on a big stage where I was really going into who I am and what I had been through. And I said, you know what? Now I get it. I get to tell people how I overcame divorce, how I overcame hurt and betrayal. How did I do it? Alcohol is not the, the, the you know, the way. Um, I didn't try these things, but these are things I see people trying to self-medicate. That is not going to give you the long-term results that you're looking for. Um, hooking up with another guy just because, that's another form of self-medication. That's not going to give you the results you think it's going to get, give you. 
So I said, what if I get, have the opportunity to tell these people? So it was such my honor and my pleasure. And I was just like my aha moment before I walked out on that stage to say thousands of people are going to see me tell my story and I'm giving them healthy, sound advice. Now I get it. Now I get it because God knew I would... One, he knew Kim would make it out because I'm, I'm a tough cookie. But just because I'm a tough cookie, that doesn't mean sometimes we get tired and weary because we do. Yeah. Right? Because we're like, but I did all the things. I asked all the questions. How did this still happen in my marriage? Like that, I just beat myself up about that for years and years and years. And so I decided, hey, I'm not going to own all of that because I didn't do all of that. So to answer your question, yes, I absolutely think because I went through that, um, I was able to learn so much more about myself and my purpose and my mission. And I'm looking forward to seeing how many more huge results and people are going to be healed um, by hearing what I had to say. And it even validates it when I get a DM or somebody sends me an email or something about, oh my God, I needed to hear that exact thing in your book. Oh my God, I just saw your TED, your TED talk. I really needed to hear that. And I'm like, yep, there, there it is. I get it now. And, uh, I mean, you know, I'm still single as of today, but Hey, <laughs> now I understand the purpose. So when I move forward with whoever, whoever I'm with next, I'm able to explain that chapter of my life a whole lot better. Was it hard to be vulnerable when you're the one always asking the questions and telling other people's stories? Did it? Be, did you have a moment where it was like, oh, this is so hard to, to share your own story? Yeah, I wouldn't say it was hard. It just felt weird being on the other side of the mic. Like even right now, I'm used to talking to other people, but I'm talking about yeah. myself, which is great and my story. And I love to be able to get the opportunity to do that because it gives what I went through legs and purpose. And I'm fulfilling why I even went through that. So it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was hard. Well, you know, even, even though, because I still like to keep, you know, my ex-husband covered to some extent and he saw the book he said oh you wrote a book and talked about me huh I said well I talked about what you did and that's what you you know what you did is what you did you know and the book is isn't even about him or just a male bashing book by any means because that's not that's not my style that's not what I do but I will say this is what this person did and this is how I overcame it this is how it made me feel Right. Because somebody needs to know how, how do they overcome what someone else did to them that made them feel this way. And, you know, hey, I, I, I didn't make you do it. I didn't tell you to do it. And I don't even harp about it all throughout the book. But I do mention it in several chapters of the drama he put me through. <laughs> but, you know, um, but yeah, again, I wouldn't say it was hard, but it was yeah, I got to tell this part of that of a part of my life that wasn't fun. It wasn't beautiful. It was very dark. Don't like really talking about it, but I have to get out of myself because I know someone else needs it. And then I just snap right out of it, tell the story. And then I feel so much better because it's the why of what I went through. Mm. I so connect with that because I'm a divorce lawyer and I go to court telling other people's stories and asking the questions. Mm -hmm. So when I was in that same seat and sharing my own story, oh my God, it was so uncomfortable. It was just mm -hmm. like, oh, I, I, you know, I kind of like you want to put a shield around you and not, and not <laughs> speak it, but it's so liberating when you do. Yeah, it, it, it is. So let's talk about your book. It's called Never Too Late, The Ultimate Guide to Make an Epic Comeback After a Setback. So can you yeah. just share a little bit of what the inspiration was for it and what people can expect to, to read in there. Yeah. You know, I had been writing a book for you. When I tell you, I've been writing this book for years, a very long time. And even more so I was kind of documenting while I was going through my divorce, while I was, you know, all the ups and downs that was going on after the the divorce, I was just documenting what was happening and how I felt 
and what would I say to this person, to another person going through something similar to this about forgiveness, about boundaries, about confidence. And I was just kind of right here and there, put it in my Google Drive and, you know, move on with life. And I got a call, you know, well, no, I reached out to Emory University and I ended up doing, they asked me, what did I want to do my talk on? And I knew that I had already started writing a book. I said, you know what? I want to do it on, you know, it's never too late. So I kind of paralleled the two because I knew by the time my talk was released several months later, the book would come out around the same time, which is what happened in fall of 2020 of last year. And so, you know, they gave me time to actually finish the book. And so I just, I go into even more detail of what I talked about in the TED Talk. I go, you know, I can, we only have like 12 to 15 minutes, you know, to talk about it. But I really go into the nuts and bolts of how to face your setback. You know, why it's never too late. I talk about um, why it's never too late for love. Why it's never too late for your dreams. And then as I tell my story, I tell why it wasn't too late for my dreams in hopes to help other people reflect and see why it's never too late for their dreams. You know, yes, you had children, but does that mean your dreams have to die? Not necessarily. Does it mean your career is over? No, not necessarily, because eventually kids will graduate from high school and move on with their life and will call you when they get around to it. So I'm telling you what I know, right? True. So you cannot lose your life. You have to continue that, continue nurturing what you love because unfortunately some people, when their kids go away to college, they sit around and say, okay, what am I gonna do now? Cause my entire life yeah. was my kids. So, you know, so you, you, have to, you have to have some balance and some key there. So in the book, I wanted to talk about what if someone had a huge money issue, a huge financial loss, why it's too never too late to overcome that. So I have a whole chapter with a financial expert on how to bounce back from whatever they went through. Now, mine just happened to, to be divorce. Someone else's could be the loss of a loved one. It could be the loss of a job, the loss of a home. Whatever their loss is, it's never too late to overcome that in some way, shape, or form. So I do that with money, um, with wellness. Maybe someone received a doctor's report that uh, the doctors might say, oh, well, you're gonna have this certain disease for the rest of your life. Maybe not so. I even so I interviewed a holistic doctor and she has dozens and dozens of clients to where the the you know traditional medicine had given up on them and said you you're gonna have to take this medicine every single day for the rest of your life. But when she saw them and said, Hey, you actually need these supplements and you need to eat this way, they were cured. They were healed. So that's why I go into why it's never too late for your wellness, for your, you know, for your mental health, for your, for your physical health. So to help them kind of even think differently about what they think might be is too late, um, it, it may not be. So I wanted to give them the tools, the tools to start digging a little deeper on how they can still get their breakthrough. And so I do that with fitness, even with style. It can be something as serious as health or something as style, you know, because when you go through something like a divorce or, you know, whatever your setback is, style, your style is sometimes the last thing you're thinking about. Sometimes people let themselves go. Yeah. They ain't 40, 50 pounds because they're just, woe is me for X amount of years. And the next thing you look around and you just, you know, hair is all over your head and your glasses are crooked. So I actually interviewed <laughs> a stylist to say, hey, for the person that's going through this setback, how do we get them back in the game? How do we get them feeling confident and beautiful and, you know, get some little pep in their step? The stylist kind of goes through those basic things on how to go through your closet and just hit the reset button. You know, once you've done the work, you know, once you've, you understand how to forgive yourself, all the inner work, we deal with that first in the book about forgiveness, forgiving yourself and how to speak right and reset your spirit and, you know, evaluating your friendship circle. You may need to switch it up a little bit. We go yeah. into details about all of that. So once we clean out all of that, then we go into the things like the fitness and the health and all of that, because, you know, it's important for you to be whole. You don't just, you don't just want to be well on the inside and just say, forget my outside. I'll just let it go. Well, no, you know, it's, it's great to keep both balanced if yeah. that's your choice 
Cam, what do you say to the person who says, but you don't get it, I don't have time, my kids are really busy, they're in all these activities, and I'll, I'll, look, I'll think about that when they're back to school or they're out in college or whatever that next excuse is. What do you say to someone like that? Yeah, I mean, that's why I wrote the book to kind of give you other options because maybe you're only considering the options that's been presented to you. So I wrote those specific chapters to kind of give you a nudge to say, hey, perhaps you can think about it this way. Perhaps you can do it, um, um, because of course, like I said earlier, when I went through my divorce, my kids are 10 years apart. So right currently, right now, my oldest is 25. She graduated from college, she's living her life. And my youngest is 15. He's a sophomore in high school. So it's a little bit easier for me now, but when I was going through the depths of it, oh yeah, they needed mom, like for real, for real. You know, I didn't have a car at the time. I didn't have money. I got tired of calling him for child support. It was horrible. It was extremely humbling and like, oh my God, wh what is going on? And at the time he could care less like, okay, you, well, you go figure it out and you'll get it when you get it. That, that doesn't put food on the table. I had to figure it out. It was so hard and so hurtful, right? And so I say to that person, um, once you, you definitely have to do what's best for you and what's age appropriate for your kids. Obviously, if you have a, a baby, that person is, that baby is gonna require a lot more time and attention than say someone that's a, a child that's older. Um, but sometimes the older ones, if you have multiple, more than one, sometimes the older ones can't help with the younger ones. Sometimes possibly you could get help from family that you trust and friends that you trust. I'm going to keep saying it that way because, you know, you don't want to get yourself into a different situation trying to go out and, you know, do what you need to do. But I would definitely say in the book, I give them certain things to, to consider, whether it was your friends or maybe sometimes at a church group or at some type of civic group, they have like mom's night out. Maybe that's when you could take that time to work on your business plan, your health, your fitness, go out on a date, do, do something for yourself. There's always a way, even if it's the smallest thing, take the step. Because that's how I started. Again, I just started printing out stuff about how to start a magazine. I would, knew I couldn't do anything at that particular time because I had drama going on in my marriage, but I could print it out and just put it in my file cabinet. And by the time I was fully ready to execute, I went to that file cabinet and I went to work because I knew what I wanted. I knew what, I, what, what life I deserved that I wanted to live. And um, I just began working at it. Oh, I love that because I think that so many people, but women in particular, really get stuck because they say they can't go after, they can't start the business or go after the job they really want because there's all of these things holding them back. And I love that because you are the shining example of that is just a falsehood. Those are things we keep telling ourselves that aren't mm -hmm. necessarily true. We have to stop mm -hmm. believing the thoughts in our own head. We have to. And just because you haven't seen anyone do it that way doesn't yeah. mean it hasn't been done. You, maybe you didn't see your mom do it that way. Maybe you didn't see your family member do it that way. But you have a different drive about you. So you're going to have to do things differently and make it a priority as much as possible. Ah, love it. Kim, where, first of all, where do we find your book? You can go to Amazon and just type in It's Never Too Late. You'll see my face. It's pink. This is the cover. If you're watching this, it looks like this. It's gorgeous. Like, yes, thank you very much. It says it's never too late. If you type it in, it's never too late. Kim Ford, it'll pop up right there on Amazon. I love it. So everyone I interview who writes a book, I, I purchase their book and I put it behind me. I'm not in my office right now, but I have this bookshelf of all of these books and yours is the color is just oh. perfectly matched oh, yeah. <laughs> to my shelves. Thank you. <laughs> it's awesome. So I it's highly encourage that. everyone to grab a copy for an inspirational story. Um, I mean, you can't help but be inspired when, when you read the pages. So bravo mm -hmm. to you. So last question, mm -hmm. what is next for you? Ooh, next. Right now, um, starting, you know, I'm in grad school, so fall semester starts like next week. So I'm back in it, you know, studying. I'm, I'm getting my master's in communication, concentration in digital media. So I have about a year left. At, um, so in addition to that, I'm 
still doing interviews. We just did a press round for um, Jennifer Hudson's new film called Respect. Mm. So I interviewed yeah. Jennifer Hudson on this week on the side. So I'm balancing all of that in between being a mom and football games and PTA meetings and work and, and head to a red carpet. So I'm doing all the things I'm telling you guys that you can do. I am still doing that. So that, that's definitely what makes is promoting this book. So definitely if you go to my website, make sure you go um, sign up for the my email list and that's where i keep you in the loop on what's coming next which is at iamkimford.com it'll pop up just sign up there and if you read the book and if it helped you shoot me a dm and let me know um on, i'm on instagram mostly i'm on facebook too but mostly instagram um at i am kim ford uh, I, I can't wait to see that movie because I've been seeing yeah. seeing like clips about it and some media on it. So I'm psyched to see it. It looks yes. so good. I love her. So thank you so much, Kim. I am so delighted and honored that to chat with you. And really, you are such an inspiration. And I know that there are other people out there who are going to connect with that. Your story. Awesome. And thank you so much for your podcast, because this is something that I was looking for when I was going through that divorce or about to go through it or about it. I was all over the place. I'm like, okay, I need help because mentally I'm not where I know I'm supposed to be. And I need someone with some healthy sound advice. And, you know, it, it would be episodes like this that really would have made a difference to kind of help me put things in perspective on what my next move should be. Thank you for doing what you did. You're welcome. It's all about sharing our stories.